You know, with all the time Dr. Karen Cashin spends doing research on negative index materials, he really doesn't have time for students who show up late for meetings. Oh, there he is now. Uh, as you can see, he just narrowly avoided John. You, you were saying something about negative index materials. What are those? Well, they are materials in which light bends away from the normal. The group and phase velocities in the material also travel in opposite directions, a consequence of which is that they can essentially act like a cloaking device. That sounds absolutely absurd, and it is hard to fight the urge to strike you. That can't oh possibly- Oh my god, did you see that? I hope you're hungry because you can go right ahead and eat your words. Well, I guess I'll have to cancel my date with your mother then. I'm sure she will be very disappointed because I had a lovely evening planned involving a nice dinner, maybe some dancing afterwards, all followed by a romantic moonlight stroll. Well, anyways, here we find our intrepid field reporter, once again hitting the books. And, ooh, he seems to have encountered a common problem of dead markers, as well as employing a common solution. <laughs> Is, isn't that right, Frank? Come on. Okay, I'm sorry for that comment about your mother, but can we get back to work? I can't believe you sometimes. What? What? Wait a second. Did he just do what I think he did? Yes, Mike. He did do what you thought he just did. And Duncan is coming over to make sure Eric knows what he did was wrong. Because some people need to be told that sort of thing. Well, Frank, Eric clearly thinks that what he did was completely justified and that there is no reason for all the hostility that he's now experiencing. Well, Mike, it is very clear to everyone that what Eric said was completely wrong and he deserves every bit of derision bestowed upon him. Ooh, you hate to see that happen. Not as much as I hate you. I, I, I mean, uh, not as much as Duncan hates it. Well, I think we all learned a valuable lesson here. But let's get back to John. Here we see John taking a break from his quest for Karakashin to do a bit of homework. Uh-oh, here's Duncan. And it looks like John may have made a mistake in his calculations. Oh, <laughs> wouldn't want to be in his shoes. Ooh, looks like John got away without a math lesson. Oh, it seems that John has finally found Kara... Wait a minute. It looks like it may be Goodhue? No, no, no. I think that's Mittler? Fox, perhaps? Well, regardless, Kara Cashin is somewhere off in this direction. John is apparently asking Dr. Egan if he knows where Kara Cashin is. I don't know if that was the best idea. Why is that? Well, when talking with Dr. Egan, the conversations usually go in very strange and unanticipated directions. I don't really know what you mean. Well, just look here. Dr. Egan is telling John about the theory behind space elevators. Well, that sounds pretty interesting. I mean, I'd like to know more about them. Yes, the topic is very interesting, but I will remind you that this conversation started when John asked where Karakashin is. By the time they get out here, he's already talking about how if one were in an elevator accelerating at G, it would be indistinguishable from the Earth's gravity. Oh, it appears Dr. Egan has more to say. I'm afraid there's no real graceful way to end the conversation, so we'll just have to see what John does next. It looks like the two of them are going to Dr. Egan's office. With only the one door, it seems that escape is less likely. Very true. When talking with Dr. Egan, time has a tendency to just... disappear. It's what I like to call the Egan conversation phenomena. Well, folks, it looks like it could be a while. Where did you get that, Snickers? W what does it matter? I, I found it. What do you mean, you found it? I, I found it. In... In my lunch bag? Yeah. It's cute how your mom leaves your little notes in there. Shut up! Uh, this looks this looks like it's gonna be a real long time. We'll just uh we'll just come back when it's done. Just, uh, can we just get those uh, lights? Uh, thank you. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Right, yeah, just get those too. Yeah. Come on up. Right. I'm hungry. Let's take yeah, yeah, it. Yeah, Woo! The Snickers did not fill me up. conversation phenomena never ceases to amaze me. Quite the sight to behold. Truly a marvel of modern science. I'm actually in the process of writing a paper on the topic. Really? Yeah, I uh, hope that I can get it published, or at least use it as my capstone. 
Do you uh, do you think I could get in on that? Sure, but uh, you're going to have to be the third author. Oh. Uh, Who is the second? Your mom. No, that's it. Oh, no, <laughs> come I'm, on. I'm out of here. No, come no, on. No, you, you, you don't get it. it you, it's you funny. Learn. Come on. No, 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 no don't go. Okay. Where's the second thing? Looks like he's going to be late for his next class. <laughs> <laughs> well, that concludes a day in the life of a physics student. Enjoy the rest of the night's activities.